Well, hello everyone. Good, good afternoon and welcome back to the old curiosity shop. On the dining room table, uh, you'll see that it's filled with things that I thrifted uh, just over the last day and a half when the Vintage Vinny was visiting me here from his home in Maryland. Now, I did show these items off during a live sale, but I know that, no, not during a live sale, during a live show. Um, so we're gonna look at them again because you know maybe people didn't see the live sit show. And I think many times when or, when, after a live remains as a rerun, a lot of folks don't go back and watch it. So if you saw the live, you've already seen these things. And if you haven't, then they're new to you for the first time. So let's see what's what. I'll go way over here on this side to a beautiful piece of marigold carnival glass that I'll probably just hold on to and decorate with this autumn. Um, it has damage in the bottom. It's really weird. I've never had anything where the bottom of it, the center bottom, it's like someone dropped something heavy right in the very center bottom of it and chipped it and some little tiny m cracks, but they're just right there in the very bottom of the thing. You see that? So I paid very little for this and there's no damage around the outside of it. Um, uh, that'll still be pretty to use at Christmas time uh -uh, in the autumn season. So that's an antique piece of carnival glass uh, in marigold, which is probably the most common uh, color that you'll find. Well, it's actually clear when you look at the base color of the glass. And I believe about 99% of the time when the marigold finish is given to a piece, uh, it's always clear most of the time. There's a glass bake uh, by McKee Bunt Pin. It's upside down, you have to look at it this way, but you can see the glass bake in there. And let's see, the celery back here uh, with the celery embossed right on it. Uh, rose on one side, celery on the other. Uh, if you had the money, you would have a celery compote like this that would sit on your dining table or your kitchen table and you'd put water in it and you put the celery in it. You could munch on the celery. It wasn't that easy to get your hands on. Uh, I couldn't run down to uh, the grocery store and just grab some celery like we do today. Uh, let's see the company. Let's get in here for a second. And The company is actually, oh boy, that's been in there for a long time. Alice Fay dies of cancer. Good grief, how long ago was that? That has to be, that has to be 20 years old. You can see how long I've been putting little uh, clips of the, uh, little, um, you ever do that? Just pull things out of the newspaper? Anyway. So it's made by, and I don't know how they pronounce that, Dazel, Dazel, Dazel Gilmore and Light and Glass Company. Um, Brilliant Glass, Ohio, 1883. Uh, then they went to West Virginia in 1888 and they joined the National Glass Company in 1899. That is uh, the company that made this beautiful, Get myself back up here. Celery. And uh, that's probably going to go in my eBay shop. Yeah, probably. Okay, Jeanette uh, made this pattern right here, which is called Windsor, right? Takes me a minute. Anchor Hawking, Waterford, Jeanette Windsor. Yeah, the little triangles are pushed in. That's pink. There were two pitchers. It was a little, uh, I think four and a half inch milk pitcher. That's the larger, maybe 56 ounce, six and a half inch tall 
uh, water pitcher um, and this pattern made from the 30s into the 40s and not a reproduced pattern so buy with uh, without fear of reproductions on that according to my books there's a freezer jar made by ball with a tin lid how about that or zinc lid or whatever it is didn't know it didn't I've never seen a freezer jar before so we've got one now there's the black glass with the chrysanthemums painted on it we'll have that in the autumn season I like this little reamer because it's signed and I love it when I find signed glass. Is that U.S. glass? You see it all superimposed over each other right up there? So you see patented. I think I see U.S.G. So that would be the United States Glass Company, if that's what that says. And then I paired together. This didn't come this way. They would have had little chrome cups, but oh well. There's the cocktail shaker with the lucite handle. And I put these little six cups together. They're flashed in color. There's two pink, two red, two blue. I think they look nice with it. Don't know if I'll sell it as a set. That way I might. Anchor Hawking's uh, oh for Pete's sake <laughs> hold on I'll tell you I know that everybody just said it I told you there's a phenomenon when you start filming hello mr. clock let me have a sip of this ice-cold beverage Manhattan there it is okay it took it a second There are the Manhattan tumblers in the Manhattan pattern. Nice. I love that thing back there. Um, it's not Chase. I forget it says on the bottom something chrome. And it did have a stopper when it was manufactured. We'll find one. But looking, put little cocktail glasses around it if you want. And it just kind of hangs in there like that <clears throat> the little decanter so you can pour out your whatever and have a little sip um, I bought the anchor hawking forest green pitch pitcher a few days ago I think bef maybe just before Vinny got here day or two before and then I went into when he and I were shopping together lo and behold behold and lo there are six tumblers so we're going to probably wait until Christmas time 1940s and 50s on the anchor hawking I love the the shape here I don't find those everybody recognizes Faustoria American. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have six of them introduced in 1915. Made for many, many a year. And how about this? I love it. And have not uh, looked for it yet. A little piece of EPG. What I like the best about it are these little folded up sides. Now, I don't know. I mean, if you want to use it as an ashtray, I guess you could, but I highly doubt that it was manufactured as one. It's footed. And then look at these little rolled edges that completely fold in over the top. It's hard to get you to see it. That doesn't have any damage on it. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, fleur-de-lis Falstoria center-handled tray that's got some wheel, wheel etching on it. Um, that lights up under a black light, if you'd like to know that. 
And then um, we'll say either Macbeth Evans or Hazel Atlas. I didn't look them up. Uh, in in uh, well, of course, if it's Hazel Atlas and it's Ritz Blue, uh, the little uh, ice cream or sherbet dishes. You see that pattern right there? That reminds me so much of the little intricate patterns that Macbeth Evans did. But I didn't look these up in my book yet. No big deal. Four of them with no damage. Exactly how they were manufactured to fit down in their little chrome cups. There's a little cruet there with some condensation inside of it. Get out of there. Now I know you do come out. Okay, there you go. So we'll leave, I guess we'll leave that out and that'll get that condensation out of there. We'll stick a paper towel down in there. We'll just put it back in there for now. And out front I have a delightful little cold painted elephant painted in green. Most of his green, some of his green paint is still on him. Can you see? And he's sitting on top of a little catch-all which you can put on your desk or your dresser and you may place in there whatever you'd like. That I don't believe was manufactured as a uh, pipe, as a smoking item because, you know, the pipe doesn't really, there's no notch here to, so yeah, I'm cause just in case anyone says, oh, that's for a pipe. I've seen, I know about pipe holders and I don't know about that, that that was for a pipe. So we'll say that you could put paper clips, stamps, rings and things. I keep moving my chair around. Let me sit back down and he, um, his tusks are not broken and I don't know if I can zoom in on his, his little snout or not um, to get you to see because I looked very closely. Come on zoom, can you focus for me? Can you, can you? Of course you cannot. Okay, that's because there are too many things. Okay, there we go. Well, and if you'll look up in there, you'll see the outline of his little nose. You see how it's shiny all around the outside and you get the hint of the two little nostrils and then some oxidation up inside. So um, it might look See, if that had broken off, you wouldn't have, you would, ha it would be jagged there and you wouldn't have that little outline. So I don't believe that anything was ever broken off of him. Uh, fantastic. And then look at this little guy. We saw, I've seen two, three of these, uh, two of them recently in plaster, which was not unusual for there to be a run. Uh, it, the, you know, they would have the mold and they could do chalkware and then they could do porcelain if they want. This one is made out of metal. It's the incense burner here. And he has a threaded hole in his head, which would have accommodated a small socket and a shade and he would have been a tiny little lamp. And the electric wire would just come out. There was tiny little gauge electric wire that could come out of the bottom here. Uh, and he's a little Buddha, I guess, there. And he's an incense burner, so the little incense cone would go right down in there. Most of the gold is uh, faded away. I'm going to uh, stick a socket back on his head and find an antique lampshade, and we'll have a cool little 1920s, uh, almost like a radio lamp that could just, you just, just had the tiny little bit of ambient light that would sit on a radio and you could burn, burning incense was a, was a popular thing to do in the 1920s, little incense cones. Okay, I cannot pronounce, and so I'm not going to try to. I know tonight I have a live sale and I'm selling these plates. 
I don't know what else I'm selling tonight. You'll have to be surprised. Um, I'm still rooting around trying to figure out what we're going to have. But this was the flower of the month club and we have four distinct flowers. So we'll sell each one of these plates individually and they are just beautiful. And I didn't even, I haven't even washed them yet. Look at that. And you can zoom in right here on the signature and you guys can look that up. TY something. Uh, you don't have to look it up on my account because I already have, Vinny and I already have, and I've written it down so I know who the maker is. But I, I've got it written down in the other room and I can't remember what it is off the moment. So we'll have all, we'll have these four tonight one at a time. So whatever your favorite flower is, uh, or birth flower, I guess there's a flower for each month like there's a stone. Uh, and then the duplicates will be in the eBay store. I do have duplicates of these, of some of them. And that's where those will go. Uh, two little uh, 1930s or 40s era uh, Scotty's salt and pepper shakers. I believe these are made in Japan with some red paint. And I, I don't know, I just love that little thing there for the Silex coffee pot, late 40s. There's three different levels here, high, medium, and low, I think. Uh, and so your Silex coffee pot can sit right in there. I don't have a Silex coffee pot, but I guess it's time to find one. Okay, what have I forgotten? I always forget something. I don't think I forgot anything. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Okay, so hey. This was not every, most everything that I found shopping when Vinny and I were out all over the place. And ha join me tonight. Got a live sale, 8 p.m. right here on the old Curiosity Shop channel. Uh, today's Monday, and I'm going to be releasing this video today, Monday. And the only thing I know that I'm selling tonight for Satan are those four plates right there. I'm sure some of this will be in tonight's sale and the rest of it will be a big surprise for you, I hope. And right now it's going to be a surprise for me. Okay, that's it. What did you like? What was your favorite? Let me know in the comment box below. And until I see you tonight, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. Wait for the cat and so long for now.